What's up, losers? I am Luke, and this is Luke Loses. We're losing the weight, we're losing the unhealthy lifestyle, and we're losing that negative image we have for ourselves. Please remember that I have no fitness or nutrition education. Everything I talk about is from asking people questions, searching the internet, and my own personal experiences. You can go to my website, lukeloses.card.co. That's got all my social media links, including Instagram and TikTok, Twitter, so on and so forth, as well as other locations where you can find this podcast. I have the loser line. It is 323-920-LUKE. So 323-920-5853. Give me a call. Leave me a comment, a topic idea, a concern, whatever the case may be, and I will address it or play it in a future episode. The music that you're hearing right now is by none other than Jake Simmons and the Little Ghosts. Check them out. I'm going to link their Instagram, their Spotify, their Bandcamp, all that in the show notes. I like them. I'm sure you'll love them. Go give them a follow and tell them Luke Loses sent you. I want to take a quick second and thank everybody who listens to this show. I hope you can get something out of it. I know I am like... Knowing that people are enjoying it, knowing that people are listening to it, keeps me wanting to continue. And I just really appreciate it. I love every one of you that gives me a listen, a follow, a like, comment, whatever the case may be. I really appreciate it. But I was looking at my statistics, and I've got people from all over the world, which blows my mind. So there's people, obviously, from the U.S. and Canada, but the U.K. and Brazil, India... Australia, Russia, New Zealand, Romania. I just thank you all so much. I want to hear from everybody. So please message me, follow me on Instagram, leave me a comment, send me a message, or you can message me at lukeloses at gmail.com and send me a message and tell me how you found the podcast and what you think of it, whether it's good or bad, especially those from the, the other countries. I would love to hear how you came across the podcast and what you think of it. I look forward to hearing from all of you. And once again, thank you all so much. It means the world to me. We're going to jump right into today's episode. And today it is about how food has evolved over the years. And maybe we might touch on society playing a role with obesity. By the end of this episode, I know I'm going to sound like that guy who believes in every conspiracy theory. And that's okay. I'm just going to put it out and I want people to know. I'm going to post all the links that I used for this episode in the show notes. I also want to say right now that I'm not advocating for any particular diet or way of living, whether you're vegan or vegetarian or carnivore, whatever the case may be. I am not saying this way is right, this way is wrong. I'm just going to bring up all the stuff that I found and we'll talk about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some statistics and studies that I did find. First study in 2019, four out of 10 Americans are obese, which would put it at 93.3 million people are obese. Portion sizes have changed so much over the years. A study in 2015 said larger portions and larger tableware contribute to people overeating. So if you just think about that, the bigger the plate, the the bigger the serving, the more you're going to eat. For me anyways, I was taught to finish your plate. Growing up, finish your plate, finish your plate, finish your plate. And now if I do that, when I go out and order something from a restaurant, I'm eating two serving sizes, sometimes three. So that does contribute to people overeating. I found an article talking about sizes of burgers and french fries from the 1950s to today. And the average burger in the 1950s was four ounces. Today it is 12. Same thing with french fries. 1950, it was 2.5 ounces. Today it's 6.5. There is a dramatic change in the past 70 years of how much we're eating. And I just want to throw this out there. I've seen that 
McDonald's sells 75 burgers a second. That blows my mind. Just a fun fact for you. And then if you think the value, I say value in quotes, the value size deals that you can get at these restaurants, they're giving you more food for your dollar, which everybody loves saving money. Everybody likes getting more. That leads me into the fact about food is everywhere. You can't go X amount of miles without seeing something related to food and marketing. So your billboards, your commercials, your whatever the case may be. Marketing works. Some people say it doesn't work, but grocery stores spend $190 billion a year on marketing alone. So that just says like they're not going to spend a dollar more than they need to on something that's not working. So it obviously works. Food is the number one marketed product of everything. And junk food is the number one marketed food product. Like your fast food, your desserts, your candies, so on and so forth. And most of the targeting for these market ads are targeting children, which is smart on the business end because the kid's going to ask the parents, the kids are going to talk their parents into buying it, and the parents are going to give in. One thing that I did find out while doing this research, and it blows my mind, that it goes much deeper than just putting an ad out, putting a picture and a, a slogan out. It goes as deep as colors and shapes and certain music that will affect what we buy. And like I said, that's crazy to me to think that I can be controlled by music on what I buy and how I spend my money. And a lot of people say that they can't. I found a study that they did in a grocery store. On certain days of the week, they played French music. And on the rest of the days, they played German music. And the day that they played French music, more French wine was sold. And opposite of that. So on the days that they played German music, German wine was sold. So now we're getting into that section that I referred to the conspiracies, especially on that, you know, like being able to be controlled by music. Next thing I want to talk about is the food delivery, right? So the ease of getting food, how easy it is to get something. And with the rising rate of childhood obesity, some of these delivery services are banned in school zones. And the, the service is awesome. And I think it's a great idea. The service isn't unhealthy, but it makes it easier for us to get unhealthy food and more of it. Right? So think about that. The ability to get whatever you want, whenever you want, that is a ticking time bomb for obesity. If you're not obese and you're ordering these off these apps where they're delivering you food every day, sometimes multiple times a day, you are just going to gain and gain and gain unless you're moving a lot or your metabolism is ridiculously high. As for the food itself, I read that most of the food that we eat today, 20 years ago, would have been considered a treat or a snack. Because it is highly processed and has very little nutritional value, for the most part, not all of it. In the 1970s, the hog, beef, and dairy farmers joined the chicken farmers with the mass production. So after the 70s, that's when they were trying to get out as much as possible, as fast as possible, and as cheap as possible. In 1973, they developed genetic engineering where we've always altered what we eat. Since the beginning of time, there's been talk of this and this make this, right? Well, this is genetic engineering. And it is, in 1992, the Flava Seva tomato was approved for market. And what that was is bigger, juicier, stays fresh longer. 
Now, for those of us that can remember 1990, the food what we were eating in 1990, the tomato, the whatever, was an entirely different tomato in 1995. Now, most of our fruits and vegetables today are genetically engineered, unless you get organic or if you actually look into what you're buying. I don't. I want to look into it now. I want to, after doing this research, I want to see the difference in these things, right? I saw a picture on Facebook of a tomato that was grown from the seed today and then grown from a seed that they found that was back from the early 1900s. And the new tomato looks like your typical tomato. And the one from the 1900s, it wasn't fully red. It was different, right? So I I just, I wonder what it would be like to cut into that and what it would taste like. Now we're going to get into the real conspiracy stuff. Um, The addiction. Over the past 50 years, the food industry and the chemical companies have teamed together. They add chemicals to our food that affects the taste and the color. Fast food companies know you are coming back to get more food because they have done all the research to know how to do it. They rely on math and science to learn what keeps us attached to that food, what makes us want that food. They have it down to a perfect amount of salt, fat, and sugar. That gives us that yum feeling and makes us run back to their door. I read that they have the food so perfectly blended that we don't get full fast. And an article said that if people chew their food to extract the flavor, to get that enjoyment from eating, we would eat slower and we would become full. So they have it to where certain restaurants, when you bite that food, It tastes the same every bite. You're not chewing and getting a new flavor as you go on. You're taking a bite and it tastes like this. Taking a bite and it tastes the same, right? So that we're going to eat faster because it all tastes the same. And we won't get full, so we might buy more. And the crunch, like when you bite into some foods like potato chips, that sound isn't normal. It's not a normal sound that you would get like if you were to make it at home it's added what they use to make that crunch it amplifies in our jawbone and distracts us so we're not paying attention that we're eating on chips and some other foods they dissolve fast in your mouth to trick our brain that we are eating less calories and when we eat less calories or when we think we're eating less calories we're going to eat more Chances are we're going to go back and get more. It's, I know I sound crazy saying all this and I, I trust me. I know I sound like those guys on those alien TV shows or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I'm going to link all this in the description and you can check it out yourself. I don't have the credentials of the person that did most of this article, but they were somebody who was involved with it. So I'm going to end the episode with salt, fat, and sugar, right? Those are the three pillars of processed foods. And the food industry hates the word addiction. They hate the term food addiction. But the fact is these three ingredients in the perfect amount blended to the perfect amount makes us want more. So we'll buy more and we'll eat more. So, yeah, just some food for thought. Thanks, guys. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I learned a lot doing this research. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a review. Uh, Leave me a five-star rating. Those are two different things, just so you know. I thought I could just do a star and be good. Well, I wasn't reviewing the podcast. So leave me a a, a review and a a rating. It doesn't have to be five-star. I'm not going to say just do it to do it. If you like the show, leave me a five-star. If you don't, Leave me a one star, whatever. Please, if you could share this podcast, whether it's this episode or a previous episode, share it on your Facebook. Tag me on your 
Instagram, whatever. I'm on Twitter. I don't use it. Hit me up on Twitter. I will see that you message me or you tagged me. That would help the podcast out the most if you could share it with somebody. And yeah. So again, thank you all so much for listening. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, everybody that listens to this. I appreciate it. And I love every one of you. It means the world to me that you are sticking through and listening to what I have to say. Check out my website, lukelooses.card.co. That is C-A-R-R-D dot C-O. Don't forget, you can hit up the loser line. It is 323-920-LUKE, so 5853. Call me on there. Tell me what you want to hear me talk about. I would be more than happy to do an episode on what the people that are listening to this want to hear. Again, Jake Simmons and the Little Ghost. Check them out. They have so much music. They're, you can stream on Spotify. Check them out on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Bandcamp. You can buy all their records, including vinyl. So, yeah, give them a follow. Don't forget to check out the Trimming the Fat Weight Loss Support Group on Facebook. It is a support group that myself, Corey, and Adam all came together and decided to make a safe place where people can ask questions, post their inspiration, find motivation, post up your goals. I've got a recipe thread that I started and we do a video podcast where we go live on Facebook and we post it on our YouTube. And we also just do the audio where we upload it to Spotify and Apple. We do that once a week. So check it out. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm sure the rest of the guys look forward to hearing from you. What else can I say? That's that. As always, stay positive, do the work, trust the process, and I will see you on Friday for my weigh-in.